we are going to look at solving equations from a perspective of algebra tiles. So in, these, in this example, the rectangles represent x and the circles represent the constants. So here we have a picture of x and three constants on the left equals five constants on the right. So that is the same as x plus three equals five. So I'm going to show how I would be able to solve this puzzle to find out what must the rectangle equal. So I would cross out three circles on the left and three circles on the right to see that one rectangle equals two circles. So that would mean x equals two. Now how would I show that in the equation? That would mean that I would have to subtract three So scratching out and crossing out and subtracting are the same thing. So I would subtract 3 from both sides. That would mean x equals 2. Now in class we learned how to check, and I would show how to check, but that would be on a different presentation. But now we just know that the picture shows x equals 2 and my equation shows x equals 2. Now let's look what happens when it gets to have variables on both sides. So now I have rectangles on both sides of the equal sign. So this picture represents 3x plus 4 equals x plus 8. So in order for me to get it so that I have, could figure out what's in one rectangle or one x, then I would first cross out an x on both sides, which would leave me with 2x on the left and no x on the right. So how would I show that with math? I Crossing out the same as subtracting, so I subtract x over here and subtract x over here. So that would leave me with two x's plus four. I still have four circles on the left, and I still have eight circles on the right. So now to get just x's on the left, I would cross out four circles on the left and four circles on the right. And in my equation, I would show that crossing out is the same as subtracting, so I would subtract 4 on both sides. Which leaves me with, look at the picture, I have 2 x's on the left and 4 circles on the right. So now, to solve this, I have 2 x's on the left and 4 circles on the right. That means I have to divide by 2. I divide these four circles into two separate parts because these two go inside here and these two go inside here. So I divide two on both sides. That means there must be two in each x. So x equals two. Okay, in this example it's a little different because <clears throat> I have 3x plus 9 on the left, but on the right I have 6x's minus 3, which is the same as plus negative 3, so that's why I have red circles on the right, because they represent 3 negatives. So when I solve this one, it's going to be a little bit different. I'll just start by taking away the extra x's on the left, so that I only have x's on one side. So if I want to get x's on one side, I could take away three x's on the left and three x's on the right. So if I take away three on the left, I take away three on the right. So take away three x. That would leave me with just nine on the left. And I still have three x's and three negatives on the right. So now when I'm solving this, <clears throat> I can't just take away three negatives on the right because I don't have any negatives on the left. So I, whatever I do to one side, I do the other. So if I was going to take away three negatives on the right, I would have to take away three negatives on the left. But I don't have any negatives on the left, so I can't just take them away. So instead, in order to get rid of these three negatives, I'm not going to take away. Instead, I'm going to add three positives on the right. And those are my positive circles, me coloring them in, sorry. So 
if I add this, if I add one positive to this one negative, that gives me zero. So every time I add a positive to a negative, I get zero. So that's three zero pairs, which would get rid of those three negatives. But if I add three positives to the right, I have to also add three positives to the left. So again, I added, I didn't subtract, I added three positives to the right, and I added three positives to the left. So that leaves me with 12 on the left, 12 equals three x's on the right. So my last step will be to divide. So I'm going to divide this into three equal parts. So three x's into three parts, and I will divide this into three parts. Oops, I didn't do that right. I'll divide this into three parts, but why did I divide it that way? That one goes in there, and then that one goes, there I caught it, in there. Yay. So I divide it by three, and that gives me four, four circles in each part. So four equals x. So that's how you solve them when you have subtraction. Instead of subtracting three from both sides, I added three to both sides. So here are the steps. And the reason why it says subtract slash add or subtract slash add is because it depends on what you have here. So here are the basic steps to solving these. And I'm just going to draw the line down to separate the two sides. So remember, whatever you do to one side, do the other. So the first step should be to get rid of the extra variables because when you have letters on both sides, you want to get rid of, you want to get them on just one side first. So I, the first step here is to subtract and I'm going to subtract 2x. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. That'll give me, that'll be good for two reasons. One, if I try to subtract 5x from both sides, I'm going to get negative because I don't have 5x on both sides. And also, it's great because now my x's are on the left, which makes it easier to solve. So if I subtract 2x from both sides, that leaves me with I'm subtracting down. 5x minus 2x is 3x. I still have plus 3, so I'm just recopying equals. I took away those 2x's, so they're gone, and that just have 14. My next step is to subtract the constants from each side. So I have 3x plus 3 equals 14. So I want to get rid of that plus 3. So the opposite of add 3 is subtract. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And then I work down. The 3x is still there. I didn't change that. I took away that 3, so that's gone. And 14 minus 3 is 11. So my final step is to divide by the coefficient. The coefficient is what is the number in front of the variable, the number in front of the letter. So the number in front of this letter is 3, so I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3, so x equals, and see this wouldn't have worked in our pictures because this is going to be a fraction answer, and that's okay. Sometimes your answer is a fraction. So this is 3 and 2 thirds. So since I have no picture to go by, I'm going to do a check, and you're just going to have to kind of stick with me here as I draw this. So 5x plus 3 equals 2x plus 14. So in my check, I would do 5 times, I'm going to change this back to 11 thirds plus 3, because 11 thirds is the same thing as 3 and 2 thirds equals 2 times 11 thirds plus 14. That's a 14 over there. Now I'm going to use a calculator and I'm going to type that in and I'm going to make sure that I get the right answer so that I would have 5 times 11 thirds is 55 thirds plus 3, which is 3 thirds. So that should be which is nine-thirds, so that should be using a calculator. 
which is 64 thirds on this side, and then over here 22 thirds plus 14 is, and then I use a calculator, and I get 64 thirds. So there we go, 64 thirds equals 64 thirds, that checks. So that means when I use two and three and two thirds, and I put it in for x, I get the same value on both sides. So that's my check. So I hope this helped you with the steps and how to show the syntax and maybe why we're doing what we're doing in class. Keep practicing. Thanks.